Well, good morning, everybody. My name's Matthew from My First Fish Tank, and welcome to the Help Desk Live. I'm here every single Saturday, 9 a.m. till 11 a.m., and I'm here to answer your beginner questions. Whatever questions they are, go ahead and bring them here. If you can stay the whole time, great, that's awesome, but if you can only stay for a little while, then go ahead and leave your question in the chat box right over here and then check back later today or tomorrow and I will put a timestamp next to every single question so that you can actually see your question get answered. We are gonna let some people go ahead and show up here, but go ahead, if you are just joining us here, go ahead and add a question or a live chat, go ahead and say hi. Well, good morning, Rogue Aquariums. Good to see you there. Let some people get on board here. And again, this is just like a drop-in, basically. So you can stay the whole time in chat. If you're not a beginner and you're an intermediate or a pro, that's also fantastic because I don't have the answers to every single question. So you can help out by adding your answers in the chat, which would be really, really helpful. Hey, everybody, Bunny Ranger. Hello, Bunny Ranger. Ethan Thistle, hi. Cindy, what? Thank you, Cindy, that's so kind of you. Cindy Cindy left a donation. I do not expect donations at all here, but Cindy, that's super kind of you. A uh, few of you have been asking, uh, Matthew, where did your um, Instagram page go? And uh, I am just putting all my energy into YouTube right now, so my Instagram is just temporarily disabled. I spend a lot of time on Instagram, too much time on Instagram, and it really detracts from a lot of other stuff that I want to do. So yeah, it's just temporary disabled, so if you need to get a hold of me, you have to contact me directly, contact at my first fish tank. Should have warned us, I know. I, You know, Cindy, I thought about warning people, but then I'm like, that, that just seems to make it more of a big deal. If I just kind of like let my Instagram fade away for a little while, then maybe, maybe less people will notice. Hey, Jeff, good to see you here. Hi, everybody. So good to see everybody. Well, so for people who are joining on, again, my name's Matthew from My First Fish Tank. Glad everybody can hear me. I think I fixed the problems from last week, so let's try. If I want to do a screen share now, I think this worked. There, okay, so now we can do screen shares, which is fantastic. And then I have Skype, Skype over here, so I can have Skype guests. So if you are watching this and you're near your computer uh, and you have a really good answer for a question, let me know. I can send you the Skype link so you can join us. I tested it with audio, and the audio and the video seem to have some problem. Um, but we'll see we'll See if we can make that work. Alrighty here. So again, yeah, everybody, my name is Matthew, my first fish tank. Welcome to Help Desk Live, a chance for beginners to come and ask their saltwater aquarium questions. Whatever question it is, I will answer it. Sometimes my answers are short, sometimes they're extremely long-winded, as somebody commented last time and if nobody has any questions it's just a chance to chat and we'll just hang out here yeah for a couple hours dwight good morning good to see you there i'm glad you are doing well maybe i can give you guys um a couple updates on some of my tanks while we're waiting and if you have a question go ahead and add it in so i have recommitted to testing so right now i currently have four or five i currently have five tanks five tanks set up and uh, four of them are active and actually have livestock and one of them is in the process. So um, I have recently started a new series. I have two new series. I have the Innovative Marine series and I have the Aquaforest Present series. The Innovative Marine series is further along and that's a series I've been doing with uh, Cindy Coral Gal and Beeves Reef, and also I've been doing that um, with Puff Daddy Reef. And we all bought this Innovative Marine Encore tank, which is two 10 gallon tanks side by side, and we're just kind of sharing how we're, how we're going about it. Mine's going pretty good, actually. I had, um, I have on the left side of my tank, I have added, so I have like a, like a black Hawaiian sand, I have um, some Carib Sea Life Rock, which is purple. I added two Pajama Cardinal Fish, a Royal Grandma Basslet, a Pistol Shrimp and Gobi Combo, a couple of Nasaria Snails, and a couple Astria Snails, and then a Blood Red Fire Shrimp. And that tank's fantastic. 
I've been testing it every single day. The ammonia is stable, the nitrate's stable, the phosphates are stable. Phosphates are like 0 0.07, nitrates are somewhere around 5 to 10. That tank is doing really, really well. On the right side is really where I had problems starting out. Uh, that's because when I got the livestock back in there, I had two clownfish. I had a snowstorm, I think it's what it's called, um, clown, and then a da Vinci clownfish. I also had a goby over there, a skunk cleaner shrimp, and then the same, the same snails as on the other side. And day two, as soon as those fish got home, the da Vinci clownfish had ick. Um, I know some people said that's Brooklynella. It was not Brooklynella. I've had Brooklynella so many times, and Brooklynella has, for me, killed so many times. Uh, so many times it's killed very quickly, but it was definitely ick, the white spots. And then as soon as the ick was there, the next day after I started treating it, um, there was a secondary bacterial infection. And, and basically, what happened is I was treating the tank uh, with Ruby Rally and Ruby Kick Ick, and then I was also using a combination of antibiotics, um, but I was using Seachem Focus and Seachem Metroplex, that way I could bind the antibiotics with the food, and I was feeding, and it was really sad to watch because um, the Da Vinci Clown really wanted to eat and would chase after the food and chase after the food and just wouldn't be able to for whatever reason. So I watched him over the span of two weeks, week and a half, two weeks, as he got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier, and he finally passed away, um, died a few days ago. Um, so that was really unfortunate. But on the upside, everybody else in the tank seems to be fine. Nobody else seems to have ick. Nobody else seems to have a bacterial infection. I've been doing large water changes. So that side's biological filter has definitely had a lot more issues. There are a lot more swings. So that's why I've been testing every day because I've had to do multiple water changes on that side. I've probably done four water changes already which is which is quite a few water changes but that tank is finally settling in algae starting to grow everyone seems pretty healthy overall so yeah so i mean that's kind of the update on that side i have a bunch of corals that have been in quarantine i'm probably going to be adding those corals in soon oh i forgot to mention something the tank on the left the encore tank on the left um i've added anemones now you may be asking, Matthew, why in the name of goodness would you add anemones to a brand new tank? Uh, and let me explain why. It's not something I wanted to do, but it's something that I felt like I needed to do. The anemones I have, I have a few bubble tip anemones, uh, I have four, right? They were not doing well in my uh, quarantine tank. They just weren't. They were wandering around everywhere. There was no place for them to put their foot. I tried putting them in cups, and they were just doing their shrinking, 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 expelling their stomachs, shrinking, 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 expelling their stomachs, all that stuff. And so it was, um, it was frustrating to watch. I'm like, well, they're they're not doing well anyways. So I might as well move them to my most stable tanks. So I took one of the anemones, the rose bubble, um, and I moved that to my 24 gallon tank and I'm doing water changes on that. That tank is the most stable. It was expelling its stomach contents over and over again for about a week, but it seems to have stabilized, right? And then I had these three beautiful anemones, really, really small anemones um, that I got from a friend here in the Coachella Valley, and they were just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And so I was like, I need to do something with them. I'm gonna move them to the left side Encore because, by the, because the, the left side Encore had been the most stable the nitrogen cycle had been stable, the nitrates had been relatively stable, and I've been doing large water changes um, every, every, every few days. And those water changes uh, have been really helpful. So I moved them in there being like, well, it can't be worse, and it's actually been fantastic. They have colored back up, they're reaching out, they're bubbly, they haven't expelled their stomachs at all, they like the flow, they like the AI prime light, and you know, I just still test that tank every single day. And if there's something wrong with it, then what do I do? I just do a water change. And when it's a 10 gallon tank, you only have like eight gallons of water in there. So I change four gallons out and that's a 50% water change. So I'm hoping they're gonna color back up. Um, I haven't really been feeding them because I've heard that if you feed stressed out anemones, it can actually be detrimental. I'm gonna give them a couple weeks and then I'll start feeding them um, probably some some mysis shrimp or yes, yeah, either some PE mysis or 
um, some sort of, of mysticism, something small, something small and easy to digest. Anyway, that's update on the Encore tank. Hey everybody, so good to see everybody. Who haven't I said hi to you? I think, oh, Mikey D. Hey, Mikey D. Good to see you, Mikey. It's good to see everybody here. Thanks for stopping by the help desk today. If anybody has any questions, I know a lot of the people I'm looking at over here are old pros, so they probably don't have any questions. Um, if you want to start a topic of a conversation, we can also do that while we wait for beginners. Maybe we won't get any beginner questions today. That's totally fine. Um, office hours, like when, you know, I was a teacher for years. I think I've told you guys, uh, I started teaching in 2018 and I stopped teaching in, no, sorry. I started teaching in 2008 was my first year as a teacher. And then I stopped teaching in 2017, nine years of teaching, I think nine years more or less of teaching. And, uh, my, while I loved helping students, sometimes my favorite office hours were the office hours that nobody stopped by because then I could just get work done. <laughs> and that was sort of fantastic. But that's kind of the point of this 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 thing here. Hey, everybody. Good to see you here. So, yeah. Um, what would be a good fish to help clean up some of the algae? All right. We got a question. That's fantastic. All right. Ethan, let's go over here real quick. Let's do our screen share. All right. This is my website. So let's look at some nuisance algae. So I believe I have a beginner guides. I'm gonna redone this here. Uh, nuisance algae beginner guide. I do have it. Yay! All right, Ethan. So you can come in here and look. So first of all, take a peek. Tell me what type of nuisance algae. Oh, that link didn't work. Diatoms. Oh, here we go. Tell me what type of nuisance algae do you think you have? Okay, we have the standard diatoms, which come during a cycle, some sort of film algae. This is actually, this looks more like coralline algae, but okay, I gotta change that. Hair algae, I hate hair algae so much. Uh, another common type, and all these kinds of algae need, need different means for combating, right? Bubble algae, again, different, different livestock things here. And you can look here, like I have a description of it and I have methods of removal. So Ethan, take a peek here Tell me which algae you think you're talking about, and then we can we can chat about it. Some algae can be removed by snails. Uh, some algae can be uh, removed with with urchins or with hermit crabs. Some algae can be removed with certain fish, um, and some algae, no matter what you do, seem to just be there. And so you have to do manual removal. You have to use things like like um, uh, razor or Dr. Tim's. Uh, what is it called? Oh, what am I blanking? Dr. Tim's one and only, right? Yeah, one and only, I think it's called. So there's a, there's a lot of things there. So Ethan, take a peek here. Let us know what you think. And then let us know what kind you have. And then you can, let's see here. What else do I have here? Beginner guides? Then I have a, a guide to cleanup crews as well. So you can check up, check out the cleanup crew for some suggestions. These, these are just kind of beginner suggestions. It is hair algae on the back of my 25 gallons, and there some algae on the back of my tank. Okay. Dr. Tim's waste away. That's the stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Tim's waste away. Okay. So if we're talking about hair algae here, Ethan, um, everyone's, everyone fights hair algae. Uh, nothing eats bryopsis. Yes, that's 100% true. Uh, hair, everyone fights hair algae. I fought hair algae. Some tanks, hair algae pops up. And it's super, super annoying. And other times, um, hair algae never even shows up in a tank, right? So if we're looking here, let's see what I said. I wrote this a year ago now. So I'm curious to see what I said for, for hair algae. Let's see. What were my recommendations and would I still recommend this? Um, hair algae. Methods of removal. If you spot any green hair algae, remove it immediately. That's true. I, I think that's good advice. But if you remove it immediately, make sure you don't remove it and then let it float all over the tank. I would say remove it with a gravel vac so that it gets sucked right up into it. Um, great, yes. You can pull the piece of live rock out to do that. Otherwise, it's a gravel vac and use your hands to remove as much as possible. Cut back on your lighting length and intensity if possible. Maybe possible, maybe not to reduce and reduce nutrients using methods in section two. Cleanup crew, there aren't a lot of cleanup crew options uh, that deal with it. Some are, I've heard people say hermit crabs or emerald crabs, but I've never had any luck. Has anybody here, by the way, ever had luck with a cleanup crew member 
removing green hair algae. Um, I've never had luck with that. Uh, like 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 the larger tufts of green hair algae, they just always seem to be there, and all of my cleanup crews seem to ignore them. Um, so I've never had luck with that. The things that have helped me, Ethan, and um, I've had a couple couple things at work, and and they have been bacterial based. Okay, first of all, I've used Brightwell Razor. So if we're looking over here, let me go ahead and find this for you. Razor has worked fantastic for me, but it has come at a little bit of a cost. Let me give you the link here real quick. Um, ooh, what? Oh no, login, thank you. Uh, it has come a little bit of a cost. Sorry, I'm trying to get you the link here. Uh, the cost has been, it has depleted, I think, too much of my beneficial bacteria. So here's a link to a product I would use. Okay. Uh, the thing about Razor is, Razor, I'm not exactly sure how it works. What does it say? It's a systemic cleaner for all, oh, I gave you the fresh water. Sorry, I gave you the wrong one. That's the fresh water one. There's also Razor for salt water. Here it is, sorry. Here's the salt water one. Make sure you get the salt water one, right? Um, it has worked really well. I have had tanks completely covered in hair algae and I had my 120 gallon tank completely covered in hair algae and, uh, I used razor. I followed those instructions. I think it was like a, like a two weeks worth of use. And what happened is that green hair algae started to turn gray, right? And I would get my hand in there, my glove, I have a glove, put a glove on and get my hand in there with a brush. And every few days I would brush the rock. And as time went by, that green hair algae would just brush right off. It would just blow right off. And by the end of the two weeks, it was gone. 100% gone, right? The problem I ran into with this method using razor is I didn't realize the importance of adding back in beneficial bacteria. Now, I don't know if I should be adding in beneficial bacteria while I'm doing it or right after because as soon as this was done for me, what happened is I had a cyano outbreak one time, and then another time I did it, I had a dino outbreak. So uh, my experience has been that it can mess around a little bit with your biological filtration. So you just need to keep an eye on that and possibly add back in stuff like Microbacter 7 or Dr. Tim's one and only. Um, so Razor has really, really worked for me. What are you what are you guys saying? Let's see what you guys are saying here. You guys are saying, let me go back here. Um, hair algae on the back, Dr. Tim's waste away, nothing eats Bryopsis, Rogrims, that's for sure. Recommend Netflix movie, Octopus Teacher. I've heard that's amazing, Jeff, by the way. I haven't seen it, but I, I've heard that's amazing. And oh William Peace Jr., we will get to you for sure. Borrow what salt do you use? Okay, so we're answering a different question here. The larger tufts of GHA are probably best removed by pulling it out as most cleanup crew won't mow it down. Okay, so uh, Darren agrees with me at Rogue Aquariums. Um, algae Blenny eats hair algae, but will not keep up with it. Oh, really, Ken, I, I, I haven't used that before. So you've, you've seen the Algae Blenny pick at it, which is great, but won't keep up with it. So I've used hydrogen peroxide works. Yeah, hydrogen peroxide works on pretty much any algae, um, but it can be really dangerous. Um, it can it can negatively affect any soft tissue, so any sort of coral tissues. You just have to be really, really careful. I find hydrogen peroxide works best if you have a piece pulled out and then you use like a Q-tip and you kind of rub it around it or something like that. Um, but yeah, there are people who have hydrogen peroxide dose tanks as well, but just make sure you do a lot of reading about that before. Uh, you need to remember that often you treat the symptom for algae, algae growth, and not the root cause. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you have hair algae, then the question is, like Freaky Goblin said, what's causing the hair algae? And typically what's causing hair algae? A lot of light and a lot of nutrients. I mean, that's the answer for any any algae out there. Now, now Darren, a rogue aquarium's here. Uh, didn't you have hair algae recently? And didn't you use... No, that wasn't you. Sorry, that was my buddy Dave. Um, waste away. 
he swears by this stuff. And I was reading about Waste Away yesterday, and 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 Waste Away comes in. No, oh, I'm getting all messed up. Waste Away. He was saying he used it to get rid of dinoflagellates and cyanobacteria. So I'm kind of jumping the gun here. So even a long answer here. The thing that worked for me the most was razor. Razor and manual removal and then adding back in adding back in beneficial bacteria so that you don't get cyano and so that you don't get green um, dinoflagellates. That's kind of the answer, kind of a long answer. All right, a little sip here. Hey everybody, welcome. I try to do this every 20 minutes. My name is Matthew, my first fish tank. This is Help Desk Live. It's a chance for beginners to come and ask their beginner questions every single Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. It's just sort of like open office hours. Come and stay the whole time and chat with us. Drop in, ask a question. If you can't stay the whole time, that's totally fine because what you can do is you can ask your question right over here in the chat and then check back later today or tomorrow and I will type out every question in the description below and put a timestamp. So you just click on that timestamp and it'll be taken right to your question so you can get an answer. And if you're not a beginner, we also need your help here over here right now. We have a whole bunch of pros, pros that are ready to help answer your questions as well. Uh, what we're going to do here when you ask a question, I will give you an answer. If I don't know the answer, we will jump right over, share our screen. And if I still don't know the answer, but, sir, but somebody who's watching does, I can even go onto Skype and we can do it that way. As well. So anyway, welcome. We're here every Saturday. Oh, by the way, if you're watching right now, if you could please give this a thumbs up, that'd be really helpful. All right, moving back up here. My Freaky Goblin, Dwight, cut your lights, Ethan. Okay, so Ethan, uh, Dwight... If you cut your light to, uh, sorry, if you cut your light to prevent hair algae, will that kill your coral? Um, no, no. Corals are really resilient. If you think about it, corals can be shipped across across the world in a complete blackout, right? Um, but you definitely want to be careful. Like a short term lights out, totally fine. I've done short term lights out to get rid of dinoflagellates before. You know where I put cardboard all around the box. Long term, corals do better with too little light than too much light, at least in my experience. A coral will bleach really quickly if there's too much light, but they can survive in lower light conditions. So, you know, if you have a lighting schedule that's 10 hours a day, maybe cut it back to seven, maybe cut it back to six, you know, make small changes and see if that helps. Honestly, I've only used lights out scenarios when dealing with dinoflagellates because things like 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 hair algae or biopsis or bubble algae um those can be managed other ways that don't require such drastic measures and honestly dinoflagellates can be managed as well and ethan i saw you said is razor safe if fish are in there yes razor is safe for your fish and your corals and your inverts i didn't have any problems obviously anytime you're using some sort of additive um, even a biological additive, you want to monitor. Follow the directions exactly and monitor. And if you notice problems, stop. Okay, I mean, that's the best advice I can give you. Stop, do a water change, add some carbon if it's a chemical. If it's not chemical, that's not going to help. So obviously, just pay attention. But yeah, no, it's been it's been totally safe for me, Ethan. Um, and I've had no, no, no problems with it. Okay, we're going back up. And... Uh, Russell, I see your question. I have some questions before you. We're gonna get to first. Welcome everybody. So good to see everybody here. Oh, so, so look at this. 16 likes already. You guys are fantastic. I would love to get above like 30 likes during the live stream. I think I've gotten to like 25. So if we get above 30, that would be amazing. All righty, moving back up. Hey you, I like that, Cindy. That's kind of <laughs> that's awesome. By the way, check out Cindy. Cindy, what time do you go live with Beeves Reef and? Farm Boy Reef, um, Farm Boy Reef, right? Uh, uh, what time do you go live? Put it down here. They go live every single week, I think tonight. And uh, so do a do a plug, Cindy, if you're still listening. Do a plug, put a link, and check her out. Um, they talk all things related to this hobby, and it's fantastic because you have some people who are really experienced in this hobby, unlike myself, who, you know, only feels relatively competent helping beginners. <laughs> so. 
All right, here we go. Moving back up to questions here. If I miss a question, just rewrite it. I will try not to. Uh, Cindy, Ethan, Ethan, smaller bristle nose tangs like Tomini, convict, yellow tangs. That's great. Hair algae, hair algae, nothing eats bryopsis. Jeff, Jeff, William. Okay, William Peace Jr. asks Hi, I have a BioCube 16 and my calcium is 500, Meg 1600, Alk 9.8. Should I bring down the Meg and calcium? Well, uh, William. First of all, I know Cindy was asking you, tell us how you got there. Um, most, if not all, commercial salts will not be mixing to that level. Even even something like um, Coral Pro, I think it is. Even something like the Red Sea Coral Pro salt, I'll share my screen with you, which, as far as I know, mixes to the highest levels. You can see here, Mixes the calcium to 450, magnesium to 1350, and, um, sorry, 465, 1390, and 12 DKH, 12 alkalinity. So even something like this isn't going to mix that high. So I'm curious, how did you get there? Um, do you have a calcium reactor? Are you, are, are you dosing separately? Um, are you sure the test kits are accurate? So if you're still here, if you could if you could write that in the chat, that would be fantastic. Now the question is, is it bad? Is it dangerous? Um, as far as I know, and um, anybody here, uh, Rogue Aquariums, Cindy, anybody who who's an old pro, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think a calcium level of 500 is fine. I don't think it's dangerous. I think it's fine. I think a magnesium level of 1600 is, is fine. I don't, I don't think it's dangerous. Hi, you're using the Coral Pro Salt, okay. Um, and a DKH of 9.8 is right in that standard range. I know a lot of reefers like to keep it anywhere from seven to 12. Most, somewhere, most like to keep it somewhere between seven and nine. I found eight to kind of be where most reefers like it. So you are using the Coral Pro Salt. Well, w William, um, so how new is your tank? Uh, and how, how often are you testing it? And, and do these results keep coming back over and over again? And if you're not dosing anything, how did it get that high? I've, I've used this salt. Um, I just stopped using this salt a month ago. I've used this salt. And when I've used this salt, I have had my calcium up at 500. I've had my magnesium 1400. And I've had my alkalinity 10, 10-ish. Um, but I've never had them as high as you. Cindy's saying that's normal for the salt. High is certainly normal. The, the real benefit, I think, in, in, in my opinion, of the Red Sea Coral Pro Salt is for people who have corals who don't want to do a dosing program, who rather would rely on water changes to replenish. Because you have high calcium, high alkalinity, high magnesium, as long as your bio load isn't too high, using this salt will replenish those things when you do a water change. But if you have like a fish only system or not a lot of corals, you probably don't need to use something like a Coral Pro Salt. Um, you could probably just go with the standard salt or any other salt out there. Um, so I recommend Coral Pro Salt for beginners who plan on having a lot of corals but aren't ready to venture into a two-part dosing or a balling method or a calcium reactor because this will replenish those things. But if you don't plan on that, you know, there are other options out there um, that work probably just as well that are less expensive and then you don't have to worry about these. I mean, for, for example, just the Red Sea salt might be, might be a better choice for you. If those numbers are super high and there's nothing consuming that, I would probably switch to like a Red Sea salt. If you look over here, what do we have here? Uh, if you have it in a uh, SPS dominant, so if you're keeping it at 35 parts per million, then you have 430 calcium, 1280 magnesium. Those numbers are just much, much better, much more, I mean, much closer to seawater. So uh, what are you saying here, William? Testing weekly, H2O weekly, 30% water change. What do you have in there, William? Um, do you have a lot of corals in there or is it largely a fish only system? Um, yeah, so my recommendation is I wouldn't worry about it, but 
you probably don't need this salt and you could probably change to like a red sea salt or even any other salt out there but if you want to stay with a red sea product then just go with the red sea salt that would be that would be my opinion um but i wouldn't stress about it there's really nothing to worry about okay what are people saying here lessens dosing exactly yes so cindy agrees with me it lessens dosing that's exactly why you use that salt um optimal meg levels uh my meg levels in my tank hey a uh, darren um have you ever seen any problems with what, uh, sorry, I'm having a brain issue here, with what William's talking about? Have you seen a problem with magnesium at 1600? Um, has that ever been a problem for anybody? Um, two clowns, I, I, I just, I've just never seen that as a problem. Uh, William P, so two clowns, Zoa's LPS, yeah. So very lightly sock tank, um, you could probably switch. William, and you could probably save a little, a, a little bit of money over time. Um, if you plan on putting in like a lot of SPS, then maybe consider keeping it. But you know, you only have a 16 gallon bio cube tank. Um, a water change is, is, is going to be just fine with the regular red sea salt. My opinion, my opinion, of course, these, these are all my opinions, everybody. I'm sure you guys know that. All right, switch back to me. Okay. It's working today. The software is working and it's making me really, really happy. Well, uh, William, I hope we answered your question. Um, we had the team here at My First Fish Tank. We had Cindy, <laughs> Coral Gal, we had Rogue Aquariums, all sorts of good stuff. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. If you want to lower levels, try the Brightwell Neo Marine Salt. Yeah, you just switched. Uh, Cindy, why did you just change to the Neo Marine Salt? <laughs> I'm curious to know why you changed um, to the Neo Marine Salt. If you want to lower levels, try the Bright Welding Marine. It has lower alk. You could also increase water changes and bioload. Absolutely. Just my opinion, bud. Of course. These are all just our opinions. Uh, I'm not an expert. <laughs> so, because the concept tank isn't sponsored and it's what bees. Got it. <laughs> the concept tank isn't sponsored. That makes sense. You know, my, my builds, so like the Encore build, it's so interesting. Um... I, I don't know what to call it. I don't know if to call it like a sponsorship because my Encore build was given to me from Innovative Marine and Marine Depot months ago to do this like 10 part series. Um, so I guess it was pseudo sponsored, you know, but it's not really sponsored because, you know, I'm, you know, I don't make these, how do I say this? When I make these videos for Marine Depot, I'm getting, I'm getting paid for that, right? Like, so I'm, you know, I'm getting a, a, f a fee for that content, right? So it's not necessarily, spon is it sponsored? Is it not sponsored? But then I've set up the tank a second time. So is it would, it, would it still be sponsored even though it was really only sponsored for the first time? I don't know, really interesting. Uh, but then of course we have the new Reef Octopus tank, which I was doing research last night for two hours, by the way, and I have a crazy plan. And hold on one second, my cat is trying to get out. I'll be right back, one sec. Stay there, everybody. Go, please. Out. Okay, sorry. I'm back. I'm back. That's my bad. <laughs> but the new Reef Octopus tank, I... It's 48 gallons up top and like 20 gallons down below. And I have... I have... I have an idea. I don't know if I'm ready to share it yet. Maybe I'll share it. Maybe not. Ethan, see you guys later. We're gonna take a break and maybe... Do a YouTube video, still figuring out what I should do. Just check it out if you're generous in advice. Of course, Ethan, we're here always to support people. Uh, Ethan, if you're still here, if you could put a link to your YouTube station, that's totally fine. Um, I'm sure people would, would love to be supportive. I love to support beginners, especially people starting out on YouTube. It's daunting and it's challenging starting out in YouTube. Uh, so having support, I think, is, is a fantastic thing. Alrighty, Ken, depends on the method. All right, let's get back to the questions here. How are we doing? on likes. Oh, we're 19 likes already. If you just joined us, if you could give this video a like, I'm trying to get to 30 likes before 11 o'clock. That would be like my record. So give it a like. That'd be great. All right, moving back up. I think we answered that. If anybody wants to jump on and chat about a topic, uh, if Cindy or if Rogue Aquariums, if there's anything you guys want to jump on Skype, we could try that out. Um, I have headphones and stuff here. So just let me know. I'd be willing to send you guys the link. All right. Questions. Speaking of question here, I think we're up to Russell. Here is Russell's question. Hyperoxide works. 
making sure we're on Russell here. Tuxedo currently use. Okay, yeah, we are on Russell. All right, Russell, I don't know if you're still here or not, but we're finally to your question. Beginner question here. Is a small tank with just coral a bad idea? Do I need fish to maintain? No, it's not a bad idea at all. You could have a fish only tank. You could have a coral only tank. You could have an anemone only tank. Um, all those options are totally fine. So um, each option, of course, has its pros and cons, and each option has its own drawbacks. Uh, I'd say for most beginners, a fish-only tank is going to be the easiest, but maybe a close second would be a coral-only tank. A coral-only tank, especially if you're using hardy coral, if you're using large polyp stony corals or soft corals, could be really, really easy to keep. Um, you might get bored of it, but it could be really, really easy to keep. So no, there's nothing wrong with that idea, Russell. That's a totally, totally fine idea. Uh, ESP two part, depends, Cindy. Technically it is, you're getting compensated monetarily. Yes, that, that's true. That's true, I am getting compensated. Um, all right, it's Rogue Aquariums. Thanks, of course, Russell. We are here to help. Camp Fussell, welcome back, Camp Fussell. Good to see you here. <gasps> he can do seahorses too. I'm so excited about seahorses. Jeff, you have no idea. I've been talking. I've been I've been in talks with Farm Boy Reef, and we're in talks, and we are talking about doing a project together starting in December or January, and I'm excited about it. It's I think it's going to be amazing. So stay tuned and. I was just reminded of that because somebody said seahorses. Hmm. I'm not saying it's a seahorse tank, but that just made me think about that. Um, okay, questions, here we go. Freaky, well, when is and what is macroalgae used for? Just nutrient removal. Very, very good question, Camp Fussell. Um, let's look at some of my favorite macroalgae tanks. Now, since I disabled my Instagram account, it's probably not gonna let me look at many things. So this makes it a little more challenging. Um, let's just look at the macroalgae tank. Sorry, I didn't share my screen with you. Here we go. Images, images. There are a lot of different styles of macroalgae tank out there. Um, some people use macroalgae just for, uh, let's see here, use macroalgae just for nutrient export. Some people use macroalgae as habitat, as a home for copepods and amphipods. Um, but some people use macroalgae in their displays as, as just beautiful pieces of art. Um, and this is, this is, this is the biggest downside, everybody, of me stepping back from Instagram is I can't log in anymore. Um, but no, macroalgae is not just for nutrient export. Macroalgae can be, like you can put, so I, I have macroalgae. I mean, the most common forms of macroalgae people use uh, in refugiums, Catamorpha, Calerpa, um, probably the two most common. And those ones are primarily for, if you have them in a refugium and they're kind of out of view, those ones are, primarily for nutrient export and primarily for phosphate and nitrates, right? Um, but there are other macroalgae out there that are gorgeous. Now, I'm no macroalgae expert. I hope to become one. I'm not saying I'm doing this with Farm Boy Reef, but uh, I'm not saying I'm not. I hope to become an expert here, but there are some beautiful ones out there. And the only other one I currently use is a pom-pom macroalgae. It's a beautiful, beautiful red macroalgae. And I have it in both a refugium, which is beautiful to look at down below in my sump. And I also have been taking pieces from it and I actually started putting pieces in my tanks. So they kind of look like corals basically. Um, oh, sorry, you can't add a link, sorry. Yeah, I probably have that turned off, that's my bad. Sorry, everybody. Uh, so yeah, macroalgae is great nutrient export, but it's also just gorgeous. Um, really, really beautiful and makes your tank, if you do like a macro algae tank, it almost makes it look like a freshwater scaped tank. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. When is it used for, uh, Camp Fussell, did you say anything else here? 
Pipefish would be awesome. Oh my god, Pipefish would be awesome. Um, so, of course, happy to help here. All right, going back up here. Oh, Rogue Quarims. Freaky Goblin. Salt-wise, I'm a believer in getting a salt near the parameters you want. That way, large water changes don't change the parameters. Yeah, that's really good advice. You know, why would you necessarily get a salt that's going to radically change your parameters with every water change? I get that. I think that's an extremely, extremely valid point. Um, the only time I would say that is if, if you just know you're not going to two-part dose for whatever reason, and there's no other option, then yeah. Um, then I think using something like the Coral Pro is totally fine. Okay, here we go. Uh, my opinion, Cindy, concept. Ken, question on dosing. All right, Ken Houston. Let's see here. How does calcium and alkalinity affect pH? Oh, you asked me a confusing question because I haven't looked at this in forever. Um, so somebody please help with this. My, so here's my experience with, with, with pH. Um, my first tank I ever set up, Ken, was in a basement apartment in Seattle, Washington. It was a dank apartment, uh, no airflow, and it was truly a basement. I had a family of four living in this small two bedroom apartment and I had an apex, a Neptune apex at that time. So I monitored pH and I was obsessed with pH. And my pH was low, always low, like seven, um, seven point, sorry, 7.7 .7 or so, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm a beginner. I was like, I have to get my pH up to 8.1, 8.2. I can't believe it. So I did a few things to raise my pH. One, I heard that Kalkwasser could help raise your pH. So I started doing Kalkwasser dosing. I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I was doing it with a dosing pump, I think. And all that ended up happening because of how I did it is I gunked up my pumps. Gunked them up super fast. Um, and then I had to do vinegar soaks and stuff like that. And yeah, it, it helped. Uh, it helped raise the pH, but not very much. I mean, I might have raised it by 0.1 to like 7.9. And I was adding more and more Kalkwasser and it didn't do anything. Then I tried doing like soda ash, you know, which is typically what people use as their alkalinity in, in a tank using soda ash. So I use soda ash and soda ash immediately raises the pH, immediately raises the pH. Um, but then it just falls right back down. Okay. Then I was like, well, m my understanding of pH is that high carbon dioxide levels, lower pH. I, I don't know. I don't understand the science behind pH at all. Okay, I barely know the acid base sort of thing. Um, but carbon dioxide, high carbon dioxide levels, lower pH. That much I do know, which is why you see certain things. You see people who run airline tubing into their protein skimmer. And that's actually what I tried. I took a piece of airline tubing and I ran it from my tank all the way outside and to bring fresh air into the tank. Well, it just wasn't enough. It didn't really do anything. Um, you'll see, you'll see people um, run run their lights at a different time of day because um, during the daytime, when the corals are active, when the fish are active, and they're interacting a lot, they're consuming oxygen. Um, I, I don't understand how this works, but during the day, your pH is typically higher, and at nighttime, when everything goes to sleep it tends to slow down. So a lot of people run a refugium on an opposite cycle to keep their pH levels raised a little bit at nighttime. Now, my understanding with calcium and alkalinity levels is that, uh, okay, this is where I could be totally wrong. And, I'm, and I promise I'm, I'm going to check the comments here in a section. Um, I don't know how much of a correlation there is between calcium, alkalinity, and pH. In my experience, raising calcium, raising alkalinity, has not seemed to have any effect on pH or vice versa. Okay, now let's look at the comments. Let's see how wrong I was, okay? Let's see here. Uh, Ken, for me, all right, Fricky Goblin. Ken, for me, my pH varies between 8.43 and 8.02 throughout the day. Never use ESV two parts, so I haven't a clue if it affects pH, okay? So, uh, Fricky Goblin doesn't know either. That's great. <laughs> I feel the same. 
Coral, uh, Cindy, Pom Pom, Seahorses, Smaller Water Changes, Camp Fussel. Really like the look of the dragons. Dragons, yeah, we'll get back to that. It's amazing. You need to be able to pull in oxygen into your room by either leaving a window cracked. That is true. Hey, so Rogue Aquarium says I'm, I'm, I'm speaking correctly here. Um, so, Ken, the first advice I give to people who are having pH issues is don't stress about it. Don't stress. Almost, almost all the time, whatever pH you have, unless it's drastic, is going to be fine. And I only say that from experience. I stressed over my pH levels in my first tank. I thought I had to have it between, at, at, the, at the minimum, I thought I had to have it at, at eight. Um, and I think I created more damage trying to solve that problem than I did in helping the problem. The reality is, I know, easy for you to say, I know. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Ken. Uh, the reality is, if your pH is consistently a 7.8, it's probably completely fine. Probably, probably completely fine. Are your fish okay? Are your corals okay? Are your inverts okay? If the answer to that is yes, don't worry about it. If the answer to that is no, then you're gonna wanna start trying to figure out what the problem is. But I have seen people have successful tanks with pH consistently below eight, consistently at 7.8, no problems. And I have seen people have successful tanks with their pH consistently at 8.4. I think the trick is, not to stress about it. I know I'm going to keep saying that. Um, not to stress about it. And just kind of monitor it and see if there's a problem. Um, let's see here. Cindy says, the solubility... Okay, good. We're getting some science. Okay, good. The solubility of calcium carbonate depends strongly on pH. The lower the pH, the more soluble the calcium carbonate. Tell us more, Cindy. So what you're saying here is... The lower the pH, the more soluble. And, 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 and how does that affect? So just give us an example here, Cindy. If, you're, if your pH is low, does that mean your corals consume more or less alkalinity? Or if, you're, if your pH is high? Or, yeah, I don't know. So tell us some more. Um, tell us some more, Cindy, because I'm super curious. Um, I need to research that myself because I don't, I don't have a good understanding of that. Ken Houston, let's see here. That's what I thought. Everything is doing great. Would an air stone help with O2? Possibly, possibly, po possibly. But if you're just recirculating the air in your room and your room is airtight um, and your room is high in carbon dioxide, then you're just going to be recycling carbon dioxide. I, I honestly think it would be better to get fresh air from the outside. Personally, I noticed with with this red sea tank I was talking about, I noticed that the winter time, my pH was lower. Because I lived in Seattle, in the winter time, we had our windows and doors shut constantly. And so all four of us breathing in there brought the pH down. The summertime, I was always above eight something because I always had a window open in Seattle and we had fresh air breezing through. Um, coral. So, okay, here we go. Cindy, thank you. I'm so glad. Cindy, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, Cindy, coral gal. Uh, so as the pH changes, so does the amount of carbonate ion in the solution. Because it is the carbonate ions concentration that drives the on rate for carbonate ion, the ion, okay. The rate at which carbonate lands on the... So as the pH changes, so does the amount of carbon ion in the solution. Okay, so what I'm learning here is that I'm an idiot. And so what I'm doing right now, for anybody who's curious, what is he doing? Cindy's going to keep dropping knowledge bombs on us. Um, and I am writing this down to do more research later. <laughs> because I just don't, I'm not a scientist. I'm a theologian. Uh, I'm not a scientist. Uh. Uh, surf. Okay, here we go. Here we go, here we go Cindy. So, so that means, in turn, that the higher the pH, the lower the solubility of calcium carbonate. A lower solubility implies that calcium carbonate precipitation can be more extensive. 
So, let me get this straight here. Cindy is saying, yeah, go Cindy. Hex, yeah. So, okay, I'm going to read it again, and then I'm going to try to extrapolate, and then Cindy can correct me. So, here she says. So as the pH changes, so does the amount of carbonate ion in the solution. Okay, so as pH goes up and down, the carbonate ions change. Because the carbonate ions concentration, because it is the carbonate ions concentration that drives the on rate for carbonate, the rate at which carbonate lands on the surface, that means in turn that the higher the pH, the lower the solubility of calcium carbonate. The higher the pH, the lower the solubility of calcium carbonate. Lower solubility implies that calcium carbonate precipitation can be more extensive. So the higher the pH, the more calcium carbonate can precipitate from the water. I think that's what I'm getting. Bye, Ethan. Sorry, sorry the links didn't work. I can't fix it right now. Um, I think I have I think I have links blocked. Uh, just so that people don't leave spam because if you do YouTube you'll find people leave spam usually to like porn websites so it's just really annoying I don't want that on my on my on my comments so I just disable them I have to actually go in and approve every single time somebody puts a link so sorry about that I'll see if I can change it for this um, but bye Ethan take care so as the pH rises the amount of calcium alkalinity Okay, so go Cindy. So as the pH rises, the amount of calcium and alkalinity that can be kept in a solution without precipitation decreases. So the higher the pH, the higher the pH, can be kept in solution. The lower the amount of calcium and alkalinity that can be that can be concentrated in that water without precipitating. So that would mean then, let me get this right, Cindy, a low pH means that water is able to have a higher concentration of calcium and alkalinity. That's when you could see things like 500, 550 calcium, and uh, an alkalinity of 12. But the higher the pH, you're saying, the concentration of calcium and alkalinity can't get that high because it will precipitate out. So you will see lower calcium and alkalinity levels. Is that correct? It, and what I'm looking at right now is I am going to research for myself because I like to have answers to everything. The relationship between calcium, alkalinity, and pH. I wrote it down to research. I wrote it down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that out. Thank you, Cindy. I really appreciate that. Uh, Freaky Goblin, I found Lou Eckes, is that how you say his name? Fantastic. He's a tro tro Tropic Marin, I think, Tropic Marin? Reef Aquarium Chemistry at Macna 2019, oh my gosh. Ye Freaky Goblin, I think you sent the link last time, didn't you? Um, I started watching it. He, that guy is knowledgeable. Wow. Um, yeah, but you're right, Macna 2019. All right, so I think we can figure that out. Ken, lengthy answer. Cindy dropping knowledge bombs here. I'm going to do some more research. Um, so Cindy, an answer Ken here if you can. The higher the pH, the more calcium and alk you need. No, I don't think that's what she's saying. I think she's saying the higher the pH, the lower level you can have before it precipitates. And when we say precipitates, that's when it disappears from the water. It turns into like a solid and it shows up on your glass. It shows up in your pumps. Um, and that means you, so let's say your alkalinity was it, was it, was it nine, you could be adding in more soda ash, but it's not going to raise the concentration because the water itself can't hold anymore. So what would happen? That soda ash would precipitate out, right? I think that's my understanding of it anyways. Um, whew. Okay. Uh, freaky goblin. Okay. Let's go back to the top here. I think that's a good answer. Um, Ken, I hope that was helpful. Rogue Aquariums is right. Uh, people do get hung up on pH, and I know I keep saying, don't worry about it. You're probably fine. If your fish are fine, your corals are fine, your inverts are fine, don't stress. Don't stress. If you're able to open a window, if you're able to run airline tubing outside, great. That's that's fantastic. The time when you might want to be concerned about pH, and not concerned, but you want to have a better understanding of pH, 
is if you really get heavy into corals and especially SPS corals. If you're really trying to maximize your coral growth, then you're gonna wanna understand water chemistry, pH, calcium, alkalinity at a very high level because it will have a direct impact, impact on how quickly your corals can uptake calcium and uptake calcilinity and grow faster. I'm not personally there, um, so uh, I, don't, I don't have that much detailed knowledge about it. All right, tea break. Falling pH increases, yeah, okay. So the lower the pH, the higher concentration of calcium and alkalinity you can have. Cindy, you're awesome, thank you. You should go check out Cindy, wait, Cindy wrote it up here. And of course you couldn't put a link because I have links blocked. Here, I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna try to see if I can allow links during a chat. Um, I'm just I'm just a little hesitant just because I don't like the spam. Allow links during chat. But I'll see if I can add it. I can always block people. So if somebody wants to be spammy, I'll just block them. Uh, all right. Woo! Almost an hour in already. Hey, everybody. For those of you just joining us, my name is Matthew from My First Fish Tank, and you have reached the Help Desk Live, a place for beginners to come, ask their questions, and get their answers. I am the host, Matthew, and I will give you the answers. If I don't know the answers, I will go to a screen share, and if neither of those things work, over here we have a panel of experts uh, who are ready to help me answer the questions. If you can't stay the whole time, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and type your question in right over here. And then check back later today or tomorrow. I will type out a list of all the questions in the description with a timestamp. Just click on your timestamp to see your answer. All right, good to see you here. If you just joined us too, if you could please give this a thumbs up. I'm trying to get to 30. That's my, I'm trying to get to 30 likes before the end of the live stream in one hour. We're, we're over halfway there. So that would be great if you could do that. All right, we're moving back on, everybody. Uh, hold on, I'm still going to look at this. At a pH of 6.5, about 50 times less carbonate is present than the same solution. So the on rate, okay. All right, new questions. Do we have any new questions? Do, 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 do. Calcium, okay, so we answer Ken's. Uh, Ken, ESV... A little as possible, my pH is around 7.8 to 8. Yep, Ken, that's fine. You're gonna be just fine. Coral only is my favorite. Cindy, coral only is your favorite? I don't I don't think I could do coral only. I think I would get too bored. But everybody, you know, some people love LPS, some people love SPS, some people love anemones, some people love corals, so I, I totally get it. Um, a coral only, he can do seahorses too. I know, I'd love to do seahorses. Freaky, trying to keep his pH close to 8.3. Cindy, oh nice. Where's Where's Ryan? Ryan's probably working. I know he's busy. Ryan has a um, I think he has a new video coming out for that new Felix Smart controller. I thought Felix, by the way, was a, a European company. It's not. It's Canadian. I didn't know that. How did I not know that? Um, but anyway, Felix is coming out with a saltwater aquarium controller, so that's kind of cool. I'm excited about I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see that, actually. So I think that's what he's working on, Cindy, because I think he has to get that out today or tomorrow. Oh, um, pipefish, that would be so great. Can a leak? Thank you. Freaky Goblin. Ken, for me, my pH varies. Excellent. Cindy, Pom Pom. Octo Dragon's Breath are some of my favorite. Yeah, Octo Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath macro is gorgeous. It's, it's like Pom Pom, but the tips look different. Dragon's Breath. Let's look. There, I'll share. Live saltwater dragon's breath macro. Uh, let me look at images here. I'm a little worried about playing YouTube videos because I don't want to get like a copyright strike because it pops up later. Dragon's breath. Yeah, very, very similar to pom pom, but the tips I think are kind of orange, like orange tip, so that's kind of cool. Dragon's breath is gorgeous. Yeah, I am definitely considering a macro algae tank. Definitely, but not until I downsize one of my four tanks. Five tanks. One of my five tanks. Alrighty. He can also do smaller. Really like look of Dragon's Breath. Yeah, super cool. Leave oxygen in your room. This is true. Calcium, calcium, calcium. Uh, Ken Hughes and Cindy. Absolutely. Too many people get hung up. Yes. Freaky Goblin. Yeah, uh, Freaky Goblin. For those of you who, are, who want to know a lot more about water chemistry, there is a really good talk you can find on YouTube. I can add a link, so why don't I add a link? 
I always forget that I can add a link. Uh, let's type in Lou Eckes Magna. Magna 2019. Where is it? Reef Aquarium Chemistry. Here it is. Disney Plus. Uh, you, this is a video. It looks like it's on Bulk Reef Supply. So here you go. Here's a link. If you want to know a lot more about water chemistry, this is from Magna 2019. Lou Eckes Eck Eck Reef Aquarium Chemistry can be pretty easy and fun. Here it is, right? Um, it's got 636 likes and only 15 dislikes. That's amazing. That's amazing. For anybody who does YouTube videos, that's a really good number. So obviously it's quite good. So if you want to know more about, about that, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think I've just put the link in, didn't I? Yeah. All right. Hope that helps. That was super helpful. Carbonate for weight pH for this person. Aquarius whose aquaria are low in pH often claim they have no problem maintaining high levels. Oh, I see. So for this reason, much higher concentration of calcium and alkalinity can be maintained. So for this reason, Aquarius whose aquaria are low in pH often claim they have no problem maintaining high levels. Carbonate from their pumps while and rarely remove while other Aquarius with, with much higher pH do not understand why they cannot maintain such conditions in their aquarium or why their pumps. I didn't know that. Cindy, how did you learn all this stuff? Uh, <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. That's super helpful. Fish guy here. Love LPS coral. Cindy, yes, you are awesome. Agreed. Do you prefer glass aquarium over acrylic? Glass, glass, glass. Okay, interesting question, Darren. Interesting question. Let's do a little zoom in here because I can. Ready? Oh, look at that. Wow, that's close. That's too close. I can't do that. That's too close. How about there? That's good. A little focus. Okay. Um, I prefer glass. Now, my buddy, my buddy Rogue Aquariums, I believe, if I'm not wrong here, Darren, I believe he prefers acrylic. I think every tank you have in your house, maybe besides like a quarantine tank, is acrylic. Um... The reason I like glass is, number one, I've only ever used glass. So I have no real world experience with an acrylic tank. I only know what people tell me. I know that acrylic tanks are lighter, which is fantastic. I know that acrylic tanks have much higher clarity, which is fantastic. I know that uh, acrylic tanks can be molded into different shapes, which is fantastic. I also know that I scratch my glass tanks, and so God only knows how much I would scratch an acrylic tank. So if there's one reason I don't do acrylic tanks, it is because I know I'm not careful enough to care for an acrylic tank. But you can buff out acrylic tanks, but you can't buff out glass tanks. So I guess there's a trade-off there. Can, can you send acrylic scratches so easy? Freaky Goblin, never tried acrylic. Idea of scratching on glass scares me. Yeah, same thing. Sa same thing here. It totally scares me. Acrylics, yellow. Hey, uh, Jeff, um, when the acrylic's yellow, can you can you buff that out? I don't know. Can you, like, buff out the yellow? And is there a way to stop that from happening? Another reason I prefer glass tanks over acrylic tanks is just commercial availability, uh, if we're being honest here. I mean, look, let's, I mean, let's just do this. Let's just do this as an example. Okay, let's go over here. Let's go to Marine Depot. Sorry, I gotta share my screen. And let's go to aquariums. All right, we're just gonna look at all aquariums. Ready? Here we go. Is this glass? Glass, glass, glass. Glass, 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 glass. Glass, glass, glass. Glass, 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 glass. Okay, wait. Is the JBJ glass? Is, is it glass? Because it has a rounded edge, but I think it's glass. Glass. <laughs> okay, so um, I think every single thing I find here is gonna be glass. So it's just, it's, just, it's just more commercially available. Although, why? Why is it more commercially available? Because acrylic would be so much cheaper to ship. It just would be, it's lighter. You could do more with that. And it's less chance of breaking and shipping, I think. Uh, so yeah. Yes, buffing is an option. 
cost glasses cheaper. There you go, glasses cheaper. For sure. Woo, tea break. Ken, what do you prefer? You have both glass and acrylic. Give us the down low. Which do you prefer and why? I'm curious. Oh, and I'm wearing my cool shirt again today, everybody. Check it out. I love this shirt. I just think it's, I think it's hilarious. Isn't it great? I just think this is a great shirt. Kiss my ass. It's like my favorite shirt right now. I also like the one that says Salinity 1.025. Although I keep mine at 1.026. Oh, well. Same diff, right? Yeah, that's a cool one. Oh, oh, what did I do? Ah, stop! Sorry, everybody. Messing with my camera here. Oh, depending on what type of acrylic you use, depending on clarity. Rogue Aquariums. I'm a polycast is the best acrylic out there, according to my friend who is a fabricator. I don't know what that means, Darren. Polycast? What is polycast? Is that a certain kind of acrylic? <laughs> I, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know anything about acrylic or glass tanks. Alrighty. Glass is easier to clean. I also don't see as much coralline algae on glass. That's true. Some people love the coralline algae, though. Um, I'm blurry again. There we go. All right, everybody. Time for a new topic. Does anybody else have any questions before we create a topic of our own? We got 50 minutes left and no beginner questions, which is... It's not crazy. It's okay. Uh, maybe we can continue with my updates here on my tanks. So, oh, here, oh, Kalito, I didn't answer your question. You asked me a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Kalito Reef, I apologize. Thank you so much for rewriting your question. I don't know how I missed it. So we have Kalito Reef here, and Kalito Reef asks, I have a new 40-gallon breeder. Congratulations and a 20 gallon quarantine. How can I start a quarantine when both tanks are brand new? I think I understand your question, but please, uh, as I start talking, please type in if I'm not answering your question right. How can I start? Okay, now this, what I'm about to say is controversial. All right, if you don't believe that it's controversial, then go to YouTube, go to Marine Depot, go to my most recent Hi. video. Where is it? Videos. Is it my most recent? No, this one. Sick fish. Check out this video and scroll down. See, you see this I'm talking about here? Just like spammy stuff. I hate that spammy stuff, but this, anyway, this, it's not my, it's not my station. Here we go. Check it out. Here we go. If you don't believe me, here you go. There is a discussion here from a couple of different people about how what I did is not a quarantine tank. And I understand, I understand what they're saying. Trust me, I, I, I get it. I get what they're saying. Um, and I don't fully disagree. Let's talk about, first of all, what a quarantine tank is and then a standard, standard quarantine tank, okay? And I think to do that, if I can give you a link, I made a video, Kalito Reef. Uh, of course, this is the wrong, sorry, I got, I made a video on quarantine tanks three years ago now. Um, it's, it's still a good video. Um, it's a little old, but it has the basics there. And so let me share that with you. Um, quarantine, quarantine tank, here it is. So I'm gonna give you this link, copy, 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 paste, paste, paste. Okay, so here's, here's a link. A basic quarantine tank, when most people think of a quarantine tank, what they're actually imagining is a place to put new fish away from your display tank where you can observe and treat them if sickness arises. And if sickness doesn't arise, then after a period of three weeks, four weeks, 
you can move those fish from the quarantine tank to the display tank and know that they don't have disease. The benefits of a quarantine tank are uh, it prevents disease from getting into your display tank. A typical quarantine tank also does not have biological filtration. So you can treat it with medications like copper and different antibiotics, formalin, formaldehyde, stuff like that. Um, you can do hyposalinity, which, you're, which won't survive with your corals. There's a whole bunch of things you can do in that quarantine tank. Okay, uh, that's a standard, a standard quarantine tank. Um, sorry here. Now, this is the part that's going to get a little controversial. I, my personal opinion here is that if your two tanks, your 40 gallon breeder and your 20 gallon tank are brand new, they can both act as quarantine tanks. Now, this gets complicated, right? Um, so if you're, they can't both be quarantine tanks more than once, okay? Because if you have brand new tanks, then the first time you add fish in there, you know, if it's already cycled, which it should be, if you have a strong biological filter set up, right? If you add fish into there, okay? And then in a couple days, you notice there's an ick outbreak or a marine, uh, uh, sorry, um, a, a Brooklynella outbreak, okay? Then you have two choices. Because you have put fish in a display tank that's brand new, you can either remove those fish and move them to a standard quarantine tank and treat them there so that you can use antibiotics, um, copper, and things like that, or you have to leave those sick fish in your display tank and treat them there. But your options are much lower and some people would say are completely ineffective um, because you can't treat with certain antibiotics. You can't treat with copper. Uh, if you have coral in there or inverts, you can't necessarily lower the salinity level. So you can't even do hyposaline. So it's risky to put fish directly into a tank, even when it's new, because then you're either going to have to pull them out, which is going to stress them out even more or you're going to have to treat the whole tank with reef safe and biofilter safe medications with men, which myself included people will say are not as effective if, if not effective at all. Okay. Um, so that's one of, one of the issues. Ideally what I would do, um, uh, Kalito reef, I'm assuming you're going to set up one as a quarantine and one as a display tank, right? So if you have the 40 gallon breeder set up as your display tank, do everything you need to do with that tank. Get it set up, get it aquascape, add the sand, get it cycled, okay? So that it's ready for fish, okay? That's great. Once that tank is set up and ready to go, right? Then it's time to set up your quarantine tank. Get your 20 gallon tank out and set up your quarantine tank because, because a quarantine tank can be set up and broken down. If you just do a basic quarantine tank, you don't have to worry about cycling the tank, right? Because the way a quarantine tank works is you do large water changes to control parameters. If your ammonia gets high, you do a water change. And the thing is, a standard quarantine tank doesn't have a biological filter. Um, my quarantine tank does, but I've made certain decisions about that. But a standard quarantine tank doesn't have that. So, it's never going to cycle. So when you then go, when you add your fish into that quarantine tank, you're going to test it daily. You're going to test it for ammonia, nitrate, nitrate, and you're going to do water changes immediately. Once you notice the ammonia start to rise, you're going to keep them in there for 21 days at a minimum. If they show a sign of sickness at day 10, that clock restarts. You have to wait at least three weeks. All right, at least three weeks until there's no sign of disease. All right, then you take those fish once they're, once they're healthy, and then you can move them to your 40 gallon display. All right, so that's what I would do, Kalito's Reef. Um, there's a more complicated discussion about, about um, medications, about reef safe medications. Um, and if you want to have that discussion, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to, 
go to my website, myfirstfishtank.com, and go to setup guides. And no, not setup guides, sorry. Go to beginner guides. Go to beginner guides. And over here, you're going to see disease and treatment. You see this? And they're, they're very long blocks, okay? But if you go here to saltwater fish medications, you can see a huge list and it will tell you what the ingredients are. Is it biofilter safe? Is it reef safe? All right. And this can be a really good resource for any beginner out there who's trying to understand the difference between all the different kinds of antibiotics, because I go into great detail. I'm not great deal. I can do a lot of detail here about um, the difference, anti-parasitics, anti antibacterials, and antifungals. You know, I have a ton of info. And then this links directly to one of my YouTube videos. Um, let's see here, YouTube, no, I have to change, I have to lock, sorry guys. This links directly to one of my YouTube videos called Saltwater Aquariums Demystified. Um, which I have to log in. I don't want to do this with everybody here waiting around for me. Let's try this again. Uh -huh. Oh, well, oh, I'll figure it out later. Anyway, yes, I do have a video on it, but yeah, uh, Khalil, Re hope they answer your questions. Thank you. You answered my question. Awesome. I'm glad I answered your question. Um, there's a lot of good info on my website and is this a shameless plug for my website? Yes. Yes. But it's a good website to be honest. I mean, I made it. I think it's good. Um, so <laughs> I think there's a lot of good stuff on there. Okay, sorry guys, I ignored all of your comments. So let's go back and let's look at the comments. Who has joined us since Farm Boy Reef? Ryan's here, everybody. We got our Canadian friend from the northeast of Canada. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for being here. Uh, Ryan, Farm Boy Reef is is tonight's show. Okay, it is tonight. He's doing his live stream tonight with Coral Gal and Beeves Reef. So check him out. Um, I don't know what time it's at, but I'm sure he'll put a time in there. Uh, Ryan, I was I was talking a little bit before you got here about I didn't give anybody specifics, but I said we were we were coming up with a plan to do a project together, starting in December, and uh, I didn't give any details away yet, but I insinuated that there might be macro algae or seahorses involved, but I didn't say there was going to be. So just just an FYI here. Uh, already here. Uh, can, what up, farm boy? Hey, guys. Ken Houston. Both tanks can be considered quarantine. Once you add livestock, then you need to set up one of the tanks to be a quarantine. Now, if you choose to treat the water in the quarantine, that is up to you. Yes. Hey, uh, that was my wife. Yep. Now she's leaving. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, guys. Hey. Oh, she just photobombed me, I think. <laughs> she just videobombed me. That's rude. <laughs> Uh, hey Dwight, how's it going? Display will need to sit fallow. Yes, Ken is right. If you take your display tank and you set it up as a quarantine tank, which I, I do, I do, I do it every time, and a fish gets sick, right? And let's say your livestock stock dies, you cannot add anything to that tank for 72 days. It's a risk you're taking. It's a risk you're taking. So, uh, display, yes. Same here, bro. Getting ready. Nice. Kalito Reef, thank you. Great. Matthew, like your video on treatment. Oh, yeah. Like, Kent, can you send? Yes. My video on treatment and medication. Which. Do I have it in the setup? Wait. No, I don't have it. I, I, I gotta figure that out. Already agreed. All right, made it. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for those West Coasters. Uh, let me see if I can, let me, okay, let me see if I can find that video for you guys, because it's really annoying me that I can't. So, I'm signed in, I need to sign in as, wait, oh wait, YouTube, okay, here we go, here we go, this is going to work, I think, no, it's not going to work. Okay, so we're going to do fish disease, that's a really good video, fish Medication? I thought it was a really good video, actually. Here it is. 31 minutes? Oh my goodness, I cannot believe I made this video. 31 minutes, that is 
insane. Okay, here it is. Copy video link. Here it is. I think though, this is my video about, um, what is it called? Top 10. Here we go. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Here we go. Copy. I'm going to go over to here. It's a really good video. Uh, I think I filmed it at Aquarium of the Pacific, actually. Top 10 beginner fish treatments. Oh, look, that's my first fish tank. Hey, it comes up. There we go. Of course it comes up. Um, here it is. Watch NFL games live. Hey, by the way, when I play music here, can you let me know if you hear that? Can, can you guys hear the music? Give me a little, let's say yes or no. There's music playing right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. Um, I'm guessing you hear it, but poorly. Oh, yes. So here it is, okay. Look at that drone footage. I love drone footage, I'm not gonna lie. I know people. some people in this hobby hate, hate when I do all this fancy stuff. I'm gonna do it anyways, because I like it. But this one was fun. This was a 31 minute video. Hey, it's doing pretty good. 66 likes. Uh, oh. I was there early in the morning before everybody came, and so I got these amazing drone shots. Um, it was a really fun day, but a really, really exhausting day. Hey guys, now to hear from my first fish tank. It's oh, that's fun. Really okay, fun. anyway, this isn't, you guys aren't here to just watch my videos. No, yes, yes, yes. Some people can, some people can't. I probably just have to move my microphone better. Uh, all right. Oh, that's fun. I love those videos. I wish more people would watch them. Keep doing it. It keeps the kids interested. Well, good. Ken, I'm glad. I've... I'm constantly changing my style. Um, not changing it overall, but just changing it a little bit because I want to find a balance between between what makes me happy, which I'm always going to do, things that I like, but um, things I like, but also things that my viewers like. Um, but anyway. Oh, you did, huh? Sorry, Darren. I'm just looking here. I'm just gonna grab some of the garage cleaned up right now. Got it. Okay. Well, hi everybody. My name is Matthew, my first fish tank here. We're up to 22 likes. My goal is to get 30 likes. So if you just joined us, if you could give this video a like, I'd love to get 30 likes before the end. This is Help Desk Live. We're here every single Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to answer your beginner questions. Ask a question in the chat, I will answer it. If I don't know the answer, we will go try to find the answer, and if that still doesn't work, there are always a whole bunch of people over here who join us who are experts in this hobby and who will gladly answer those questions. If you can't stay the whole time, totally fine. Just type your question over here anyways. Come back later today or tomorrow, and I will type out all of the questions with a timestamp in the description below, and you can just click on that timestamp and see the answer. So, do we have any more beginner questions, or does somebody want to propose a topic to discuss? You know, when you're doing these live streams, even though it's like a drop-in, you know, um, I can't just sit here and like stare down. Could you imagine that? Like that would be an awful live stream. So I, I have to keep talking. So even if there's nothing to talk about, I have to talk about how there's nothing to talk about, right? Oh, Cole Woods. Cole lives here in the Coachella Valley and Cole is the one who gave me an anemone that's now split into three, the ones I was talking about that I moved into my tank. So they were from Cole. Cole Woods, Cindy, he's all for it. I'm all for it with hesitations though, with hesitations. Uh, <laughs> uh, I remember, okay, uh, Cole Woods. So let me, I'll give it for you really quick. I'm on week four of Vibrant Treatment and I'm not seeing any decrease. So I have used it successfully for hair algae. I have never used it for uh, bubble algae. So I honestly don't know how well it works for bubble algae. My understanding is Vibrant and Razor work very, very similarly. And I just, I just don't know um, how effective it is for, for bubble algae. Does anybody know, by the way? Um, does Razor work for, for bubble algae? Does it work well? Emerald crabs, yeah. Emerald crabs, yeah, I, I mean, Honestly, Cole, I mean, my, my opinion, I think, would be for, for, for bubble algae, obviously, manual removal, and then just get livestock that'll eat it, emerald crabs. But, obviously, I, 
understand you probably wouldn't want a lot of emerald crabs necessarily because what if you get that rogue emerald crab that starts nipping at your corals and coral has a beautiful tank a couple tanks that are just stuffed full of corals um gorgeous corals so i i totally totally see that but you'll need a few to keep them controlled two emerald crabs in the display tank and one in the frag tank yeah um so i don't, I don't know Cole. i don't i don't have experience with beating back bubble algae with with uh razor so i don't i don't know if anybody else knows that'd be great all right freaky goblin if there's no newbie questions chances of a peppermint shrimp surviving in an established tank with a couple rasses and a large cleaner shrimp does anybody have an answer for that one um i don't i don't stock peppermint shrimp anymore um some people have peppermint shrimp and they are delightful and they're good in a tank and they don't bother anything but the last peppermint shrimp i had just attacked my lps corals maybe because i didn't feed the tank enough that's typical of me um i'm very very i'm very very light at feeding um my understanding is that you can have different cleaner shrimp of different species some of the issue can arise if you have multiple cleaner shrimp of the same species but i've always understood it to be that you can have a peppermint shrimp, you can have a skunk, you can have a blood red. As long as there's enough space, they, that shouldn't cause an issue. Now, whether or not there's other livestock out there that will eat your shrimp, that's another issue. I mean, if you have predators in your tank, um, they're going to go after whatever they can. You know, if you have trigger fish or things like that, uh, maybe they got to, I, I don't know, I've, I, I've never had that personally. So, But I'm assuming that predators will eat shrimp, snail, and crab and things like that. They tend to turn on me and eat my... Yes, Cindy! It happens to you too. They eat your large poly... Yeah, they eat my LPS too. I, I, I think peppermint shrimp are like the closest thing to like the devil in my tank. Uh, I don't I don't use them. Yes, they're cheap. They're inexpensive. Especially right now when I paid $55 for a blood red fire shrimp two weeks ago. Insane. It's tempting to get a peppermint shrimp. And maybe you'll have good luck with them. I know a lot of people have really good luck with them. Um... So yeah, looking at natural Aptasia control. Oh, yes. They are good for that. What else? Um, what other livestock, by the way, you guys, helps with Aptasia? Aren't there some sort of like tangs? This is show you how bad I am at this kind of stuff. A camel shrimp. Razor for bubble algae, no. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, What what other kinds of... Uh, predators are there for Aptasia besides a peppermint shrimp. Um, fox face? Tangs? I, I honestly don't know, but I know some people here are going to know. Oh, look. A show. Here we go. Cindy. Oh. Wait. I just approved something. Oh, wait. Why did it show up? Cindy, I just approved something. It says approve, and I approved it. Um, copper band. Okay, so let's look at some of these things. Let's do a screen share and let's look at some solutions here for you, okay? So, Cindy is saying, Bur how do you say it? Burga? Burga, nudies? So, yes, there are definitely some nudibranchs. The genus of sea slugs. So, you could go with some of these nudibranchs. Um, oftentimes, you can't find them at your local fish store, but a lot of hobbyists have them. Uh, so, you can ask around. Um, your local club or things like that show I'm clicking show freaky goblin okay evidently I click show and nothing shows up at least not on my end so sorry yes nudibranchs are great but if there's not food for them they will starve so then you're gonna have to give them to somebody else right so that's a good option file fish really can um I have always wanted to file fish, by the way, and just never had show. Why aren't you showing? Always expensive meal for wrasses, though. I keep clicking show and nothing's showing, so I apologize. I don't know why. Um, okay, file fish. I've, I've always been worried about file fish just because I'm worried they're going to starve in my tank. Um, so file fish, copper band, butterfly. I, by the way, can we... Can we can we take a moment here? Um, how many of you love the copper band butterfly, and how many of you have failed to keep them? I 
I've had two government butterflies and I have had one myself and I've had one in my neighbor's tank. And I, we fed a lot, you know, three times, four times a day, but they would eat, they would eat the mysis and they would just waste away. Yeah, I mean like, it was like I couldn't feed them enough. And so I never recommend copper bands to beginners anymore just because of my experience with them that unless you have a well-established tank, unless you have a heavy feeding schedule, and, as, and unless there is food for them to graze all day, you're gonna really, really struggle. Yeah, so Cindy, I love them, but keeping them fed after they are out of Aptasia gets expensive. Yeah, and you have to feed a lot, you know? Like, and because uh, there are certain fish out there that are grazers that, that wanna eat all day. They have smaller stomachs, um, things like, um, uh, what, what, A ATF in the house? Mastic mix? What? Mastic mix? So that's the sticky food, right? That's a great idea. I have never used mastic. Let's, sorry, I'm getting off topic here. Mastic fish food. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I've only kept one once in 15 years. Really good idea. So I'm gonna go back to the top here. Burga Ber filefish, so what, what kills Aptasia? Nudies, filefish. Heard corals are at risk with filefish. Copper bands, refuse, okay. Molly Millers are amazing. They eat Aptasia. What is a Molly Miller? I have never heard of that kind of fish in my life. Oh, Molly Miller evidently disappeared. <laughs> Maybe I go Molly Miller fish. Oh, like a, like a lawnmower blenny. Wait, isn't that just a lawnmower blenny? Molly, I've never heard the name Molly Miller. That's cool. Molly Miller blenny. Cool. Really, Molly, really, I, I would not think that a, that a, a, a Molly Miller blenny would, would um, eat that. Eat Aptasia and hair out. Oh, really? Mikey D, interesting. Ken Houston, love them, but are afraid. Love copper band and failed once, never again. Yeah, see, freaky goblin, just like me. Like, uh, it's so horrific watching such a beautiful fish die. I mean, it's horrific when any of your fish die. Uh, it was awful last week um, when my when my clownfish died, uh, just because I just watched it suffer for a week, you know. And then I have that inner debate: like, do I do I step in? Do I not step in? Do I humanely end the life? Will they fight back? All that stuff, you know. So it's awful when a, when a fish dies. I love them, but keeping them fed after the, yes. Uh, feed copper man mastic, that's a fantastic idea. Fantastic idea, absolutely ATF. I, I've never used mastic, which is a shame. I'm going to use mastic in the future, 100%. Yeah, antheus, exactly the same. Antheus, they need to be fed so many times a day because their stomachs are small. Um, I love antheus, they're some of my favorite fish. And I currently have two that are doing well but they acclimate so poorly. Like, I hate spending $30 on a fish, do everything right, and then just watch it die because it just doesn't acclimate well. And that's so, uh, so frustrating. Uh, ones, same with Antheus, yeah. Yes, they do love the Mastic, fish love it. Now it comes in a pellet form. That's cool. Uh, yep, copper man like it. Well, that's awesome to know, actually, because maybe that would make me consider having a copper band again in the future. Uh, for sure. I'll try one again when I have a bigger tank. Yeah. Like, like how big of a tank, Cindy? Like 120 gallon? I mean, I, I would probably consider putting one in maybe in like a 70 gallon, but probably, it'd probably have to be bigger than that. Um, let's see, Rogue. Burge and Nudie ranks are really good for Aptasia. Yes. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be one expensive meal. Exactly. Wait, what did you say? Off topic here, when I first got to the hobby, I made a mistake in getting too many hermit crabs. Let me get back to that in a second here. Uh, can he, a Molly Miller reef friendly? I don't know. Good question. What does it say over here? Is a Molly Miller reef friendly? I don't, I don't know. Is it peaceful? Reef compatible? According to Live Aquaria, the answer is yes. So, I mean, not saying Live Aquaria is the end all be all and they're not always right, but they do seem to be. 
Zoas are at risk with the file fish, yes, and so many people are Zoa crazy. Hobbyists are, some hobbyists are Zoa crazy, and they will pay a hundred, two hundred dollars for like a single head. It's like that big. I think it's crazy, but I, I get it. We we all have our obsessions. I get it. We we all have our obsessions. Uh, don't Zo don't have Zoas, but I do have Acans. Yeah, I think you're fine. Is Molly Miller friendly? Mikey D. They need to come out with a frozen food. I think they have one. I I think there is a frozen food automatic feeder. Right? Ideally 120. Yeah, watch this. Hey, hold on. I think there is a... Fr I mean, it... I see what you're saying. A frozen food automatic feeder. You would need to have a refrigeration. I see what you're saying. No, they don't have that. Yes. You can just... Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes. You're correct. That would be awesome. Kind of like... Kind of like a kegerator for, uh, for, your, for your fish food. Did anybody have one of those in college? I did. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was awesome. Uh, Rasses as well. Ideally, Mikey D, Molly Millers are friendly. Just don't put another fish that looks the same. Zoas. Yeah, see, see, Cindy gets it. Cindy's into the Zoas. Uh, what is it about Zoas that you love so much, Cindy? Because they just don't... I don't feel that towards Zoas. I mean, I would take, I would take an A can any 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 day. Uh, is it is is it the colors? I'm 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 guessing it's the colors, because the Zoas have so many gorgeous colors. We love our Zoas races as well. Uh, Rogue Aquariums dropped an off-topic thing here a little while ago. When I first got into the hobby five years ago, I made the mistake of getting too many hermit crabs, and then they ate the heads off all three of my torch corals. Oh my gosh. Could you guys imagine that now? The way torch coral prices are, it's insane. If you wanna talk about insanity, let's talk about torch coral prices. Um, <laughs> I, I get that they are all the rage right now. Three years ago, nobody cared about them. And now everybody cares about them. Uh, and they are so expensive. So could you imagine getting your like Aussie extreme torch and then having your hermit crabs just eat it or your peppermint shrimp come and just eat it? I mean, that is, oh, that's awful. My technique is when people are obsessed in this hobby with one kind of coral, that's your opportunity to go find other corals and buy them because they're gonna be cheaper and wait out the obsession. That's at least been my experience. Obsessions with corals tend to grow and fade. You know, if everybody loves a certain kind of Zoa, then everybody starts breeding their Zoas and they start selling them, the prices eventually come down. We're talking years here. So my technique is always to don't buy the hot item, buy the off color item and then wait a year or two and then the hot item price will come down. At least that's been my experience, whether or not that's true or not. Oh, what do we got here, Rasses? Low maintenance, color variety. Yeah, low maintenance, color variety for Zoas. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I totally get it. <laughs> Uh, agreed on the Zoas. Kenny's agreed on the Zoas. Fish and cigars. Yes, I do. I'm considering, I've been talking to my wife here. So we have a, we have a lovely home here in the Palm Springs area and it's a uh, three bedroom, two bath. You know, it's like 15, 50 square feet, right? I, there's just no storage space for all my gear and all my tanks. And you know, I have tanks in my kids' rooms now, in the living room, in the kitchen. Uh, so I'm trying to get trying to raise the funds, so saving up some of my business money to build an extension on the house. Um, and the extension would be uh, a, a studio space. You could also, we would build it so that you could consider it a bedroom, right? But it would be a, a studio space. And uh, one of my requirements for the studio space, Darren, is it has to have really good ventilation because it would also be my cigar smoking lounge. <laughs> so. That's a requirement of mine. But I'm hoping, I, I hope in the next couple of years to be able to, to build that studio. It wouldn't be big, it would be like 350, 400 square feet, but it would, be, it would be built for fish tanks, it'd be built for YouTube, it'd be built to for the behind the scenes, and it would be a really, um, like, like it, it would look like a studio, so it wouldn't be cluttered, it'd be very clean, allow me to have tanks, to break them down, to do experiments, uh, and to make my YouTube videos without doing what I'm currently doing, which is sitting in my bedroom or sitting in the living room and kicking the kids out and all that kind of stuff. So, 
Uh, anyway, what are we at here? Ooh, we only got 20 minutes left. Ask your questions if you got them. My name is Matthew, everybody, from My First Fish Tank. You've come to Help Desk Live. We're here every Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to answer your beginner questions. I will answer them. If I don't have the answer, look over here. We have a whole bunch of experts who will answer questions in the chat. We can also look up answers ourselves in our screen share, and, sure. we are, and we also have the ability Skype, so something else we can do. If you can't say the whole time, that's fine. Ask your question and then come back later in the day. I will type out all the questions with a timestamp down below. All you gotta do is click on the timestamp next to your question and you can see your answer. All right, we're at 23 likes. I don't think we're gonna get there today, but if you haven't done it yet, if you could like this video, that would be really appreciated. My goal is to get to 30 likes during a video and like during the live stream. And I haven't gotten there yet. Maybe today's the day. 24 likes, thank you guys, you guys are awesome. So if you could do that, it's really, really helpful. Alrighty, back at it. Fish and cigars, rogue aquariums, yes. That is my greatest sin right now. Cigars, I love cigars. Uh, thanks for the chat, folks. Gotta go, take care. You too, Freaky Goblin, thanks for stopping by, we really appreciate it. Uh, Cindy Coral Gal, I bought Aussie torches six plus years ago before they were cool. Cindy, do you have any idea how much you paid for them? Because I guarantee you they were not $100, $200, $300 for a tiny head, right? Um, yes, love Zoe's and Hands. What's a good protein skimmer? Mikey Moore, what's a good protein skimmer? That's hang on the back. Dwight says, I have an Aquamax HOB. Bought it at Marine Depot. That's actually what I would recommend. HOB Protein. I've had it. They make a whole line of them. So, Reef Octopus. You're not going to go wrong with Reef Octopus, by the way. If you want to use them, that's fantastic. But look at this one. You can get the Cone S HOB hang on the back. Reef Octopus has them. Uh, Aquamax sells them in different sizes. So, uh, my I've had good experience with the Aquamax. I would not... Okay, that, that's not a hang on the back. So there's a little difference here, uh, Mikey. So for example, um, these nano ones are not hang on the back. They go in a rear filtration chamber and I have not had a lot of luck. I have owned, oh, I, I'm sorry guys, I didn't screen share, my bad. Um, I've owned this one, okay? And this is a nano protein skimmer. It's not a hang on the back. And it's just so small, and the reaction chamber is so small that I could just never get a good skim out of it. At least that was my experience. But a hang on the back skimmer can be a lot larger. So, I mean, look at the size of this bad boy. This Aquamax Cone S Coneza. Fantastic, fantastic hang on the back. Huge reaction chamber. It's gonna do really, really, really well. So I have used this one. It's fantastic. I would trust this one because I trust Reef Octopus. They make good protein skimmers, period. Uh, they just do. So I haven't used this one, but I bet you it works just fine. Um, but yeah, Aquamax, Reef Octopus, those are the two I see here. Those are the only two I really know of. Yep, so yeah, there you go. Check those out. Oh, good protein skimmer, Dwight. All right, Mikey. So I might try to start breeding clownfish to raise money for a 60 to 75 gallon reef. Is that a good option? Or is breeding clownfish something I should do after I've already established an aquarium? Cindy, breeding clownfish is very time consuming. You'll need more quarantine systems to raise them. Matthew, can the HB leak? Cindy, I got paid 30 to 60, 30 to 60 per head for those torch corals. Goodness gracious. Okay, uh, all right, Mikey. Clownfish breeding. We talked about it last last time, I think. Um, Cindy is right. Clownfish breeding is very possible. Very, very possible. But very time consuming. And you need, I think you need at least two, two tanks. I've never done it. But my understanding is you need one tank for the mated pair. Okay? A place for them to lay their eggs. That's the easy part. Feed them a lot. Moonlighting provide them with a terracotta pot sort of a thing. They lay their eggs. Then you have to pull the whole terracotta pot and the eggs out before they hatch. And I'm no expert, but it has to be like 
a day before they hatch, something like that, like six days, something like that. And then you have to move them to another tank. And I don't know what goes in this tank, but I know the water quality has to be amazing. The filtration has to be safe because these little fry are gonna get sucked into a skimmer, that are gonna get sucked over an overflow. So you have to set it up in such a way, which I'm sure you do your research, so that, so that that doesn't happen. And then you can't just feed them any food. I believe you have to feed them rotifers. I think that's what they are. Very, very small food. So you either have to buy that live food yourself or you have to have it constantly made. And you have to feed them constantly, several times a day. So unless you're gonna be able to be at home or have someone do that, I think it's challenging. I'm not saying it's not possible. I think it's very possible. And I think one day I will dabble into it just, just for fun, just to try it out. Um, but whether or not it's a good investment right now, I would say probably not because you're probably gonna spend more money right now uh, to set it up and you're probably gonna have failure at the beginning before you find success. So you're probably gonna be throwing a lot of money into it up front. It could pay out for you in the long run, um, but if you really wanna save up for a 60 to 75 gallon, it's just gonna be better to just save your money or do an inexpensive 60 to 75 gallon tank. That would be, that would be my advice. Uh, Mar I got 20 gallon Mark Louie we welcome back Mark good to see you here again I got 20 gallon is it okay to use HOB or canister filter yeah um, both are totally fine so if you have a 20 gallon let's start with HOB filters okay now you can go expensive Aquamax uh, my buddy Darren's used these. I've used these. This is high end. You don't need this, okay? But this is an example of high end, okay? It comes with a skimmer. It's big. It's quite large, really, right? Quite large indeed. Very nice, very deep, would work great. But it also costs $230 and it's out of stock, okay? I, oh my God, I am so sorry. I was not sharing my screen. I, I need to get better at this. I'm sorry. I got to look. I've, I see myself here. I see myself here and I see myself here. So I have to remember to look here. This is what I was talking about, Ken. Sorry about that. Um, Aquamax, hang on the back. Fantastic, expensive, and temporarily out of stock. Okay. That being said, let's go to Amazon. Now let me show you the ones I have used in the past. So eight pen plaques HOB. Check these out. I have owned this one. You last purchased this January 6, 2019, right? Look at this. 300, 300 gallons per hour. That is a huge turnover rate, right? And look how much it costs. $33, $33. It's not fancy. All it has you, it has one compartment, it comes with a little plastic baffle and a sponge, but it works just fine. Um, so go expensive, go cheap. I think Cindy had a recommendation. E-shops, let's look at it. E-shops, is that how you say that? E-shops, do they sell it? At, I don't know if they sell it at um, Marine Depot. E-shops. H-O-B filter, am I spelling it wrong? I think I'm spelling it wrong. E-shops. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not finding that one for some reason. I don't know why I'm not finding that one. Nano H-O-B filter, bulk resupply? Do they have it? Maybe bulk resupply has it? Oh, here you go, Eheim. Well, I know Eheim does. Anyway, I'm not finding that one. Um, but anyway, the, the, the two I recommended work work really well. Canister filters, I can't recommend any. Not because they're not good, I just, I've never used a canister filter in the saltwater hobby. I know people who do, and I know people who have great success. If I was gonna buy a canister filter, the most important thing for me would be that there's enough filtration space and that the return pump is turning over the water volume enough. So you set up here 20 gallons, I always shoot for around turning over the water volume 10 times per hour. 
So I would shoot for something that's at least rated for 200 gallons per hour. Understanding that if your tank is up here and your canister filter is down here, you're gonna lose some of that power as the water travels vertically from your canister filter up to the display tank. So just take that into consideration. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty of good ones out there. I just don't know what to recommend for that. So anyway, I hope that was helpful there. Uh, Seachem title are good. Let's look up the Seachem title. Somebody asked about that last week. I I assume they're fine. I've I've never used them. There we go. Saltwateraquarium.com. Uh, I mean, I've never owned it. Just looking at it, it looks it looks better quality than the Penplax ones I showed you. Um. I mean, it just looks sturdier. So what is this one? 110 HOB up to 110 gallons. Might be a little small, but it also costs 82 bucks, you know, so it's significantly more. Bye, Darren. See you later, Darren. Um, it does cost more, so. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, Seachem makes good products. I like Seachem, so I'm assuming this one works well. Might be a good intermediate. Uh, I wish I could see here. What is it? Sorry, I'm trying to see, like, is there anything special inside? All right, see that? I can't read it. Um, I think it it might be a fancier version of the Penplax one. Maybe not. Um, I've never used it. But probably going to be fine. But, I mean, I would probably say why pay the $82 when you could go with the, the Penplax one? You could go with the Penplax 200 for $28. That would be my recommendation. Anyway. Louis Beats... Hi, Louis Beats. Uh, Louis Beats. Uh, what do you think of Nio skimmers? That's, that's easy. I think they're great. I've never used them. Never used a Nio skimmer. I have friends that have. I've had colleagues that have. And they say that they are fantastic. Um, but I have no anecdotal experience of my own. Um, if you... Can get, I mean, uh, is it better than an Aquamax? Is it better than a Reef Octopus? Is it better than a Bubble Magus? I, I, I can't say that. But what do people say? Let's see here. What do people say here? Uh, what do people say? Nios? Do they sell them here? Nios Skimmer? Are they, are they rated? Similar prices? Oh, they're pretty spendy here. Quantum 120. Quantum 120, 400 bucks, 11 reviews, great ratings. I mean, so everything, I mean, everything, uh, Louis Beats looks great. What do people say? Quiet, good size. It's a beast. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think, yes, positive. Alrighty. Uh, Dwight, knock on wood, rogue. I'll be using the Reef Octopus. 250 for my frag tank. Yeah, I'm going to be using the Reef Octopus 150 INT for my new build. Last year I bought a three-headed gold torch for $450 only to watch it die. I know Darren's not here anymore. Oh my gosh, that's awful. Oh, uh, Cindy is saying, uh, Ryan, oh, okay, uh, Louis Beats, no, um, wait, who's asking about that? Uh, Shoot, who was asking about that, Mikey? Oh, uh, Mark Louis Wee, um, Farm Boy Reef. Check him out. Maybe go uh, go to Instagram, go to Farm Boy Reef, or check him out on YouTube, Farm Boy Reef. Um, evidently, he has experience with canister filters, so he might be able to answer your question if you shoot him shoot him an email. It's a uh, Farm Boy Reef. Let's see. I don't think he's here anymore. I think he's busy today, but I just typed it in there. Okay. Alrighty, questions, questions. 30 to 60, you think of Nio Skimmers, knock on wood, Cindy. Dino, hi, Dino, Dino Fernando. What is your impression, opinion of the Octo Lux Aquarium so far? Okay. My opinion of the Octo Lux, the Lux T90. So the reason he's asking that, for those who, who, who aren't aware, is I started a series. And uh, I started a series um, 
with Coral View. Coral View is a distributor of saltwater aquarium products, right? So I started the series with Coral View and it's called Aquaforest Presents. And we're trying to show Aquaforest products in action in the US because Aquaforest is a Polish company and they're big in Europe, but they just don't have much of a presence here. Well, Aquaforest currently, currently sells a sump and they're working on a tank. So you can't get the tank yet. So uh, Reef Octopus was kind enough to donate the Lux T90. Okay, so what am I saying here? Um, these things were given to me. I did not buy them. Okay, so I, I, I think I can still give you my honest opinion, um, but just know that they were given to me. All right. What is my opinion of the Octolux? Overall, very positive. I think it's an extremely fair price. It's $1,800 for the T90. Um, and let's, for people who don't know, let's go ahead and show it to them. It comes in two sizes. Octolux. All right, so this is the one I have right here. Oop, here it is. This is the, this is the one I have. Uh, it is an all-in-one system. It comes with everything you need except for lights. It doesn't come with any wave makers if you want a wave maker. Um, but it comes with the glass aquarium, 48 gallons up top, an acrylic sump. It comes with an MDF stand, which is super heavy duty. It's the heaviest duty stand I've ever had. It comes with all the plumbing you need. It comes with a return pump. It comes with a reef octopus protein skimmer. It comes with a removable baffle. So it comes with almost everything you need. I am adding a light to it. I'm adding a DIY mesh screen to it. And I'm adding two reef octopus wave makers to it. So I have only put it together and I haven't gotten it wet yet. My initial thoughts, the stand is fantastic. It is um, glossy. It's a glossy stand. So I'm be, be curious to know how I like that. Cause I think it will clean really, really well, but it has a very plasticky feel to it, even though it is MDF. It seems to be the thickest, heaviest duty stand I've ever had. Okay. The glass tank itself, I am very, very curious about. Um, because it has, if you look here, an overflow that goes the entire length. All right. Now, one thing I do wish, I wish the back of this aquarium was glass because if you can see in this picture, what you're looking at, the whole back is a plastic and it's kind of like a rough plastic, um, kind of like a, your standard wall, which means that as algae grows on there, it's going to be almost impossible to scrape off. I think because even if you're using an acrylic piece or a credit card to scrape it off, there's bumps and grooves. So that's just going to be a challenge if you like to have a clean black back wall. So that's one thing I do wish they had differently. But the unique thing about this system is it's slim flow overflow. This, what I'm showing you right now is on the bottom of the tank. So the water goes in here, it goes in the back and it flows all the way down this overflow down, 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 down to the bottom of the tank and the bottom of the tank is where you connect your plumbing to, right? Let's see what's this picture of. So all of your plumbing is connected. Yeah, here it is. See this is connected through the bottom of the tank. That means that there doesn't have to be any equipment between the wall and the back of your tank. There's no overflow. It can sit flat. And that also means that there is no internal weir. So you get a 48 gallon, like a large breeder tank with nothing inside. Really cool idea. Price point wise, you know, I think it's extremely competitive. Can you do a 48 gallon tank for a lot cheaper? Of course. If you go to Petco, if you go to PetSmart and you pick up a 40 gallon breeder tank and you buy that pen plaques, hang on the back filter, you could have this all done for a few hundred dollars. But is this competitive, especially when compared to their prime competitors, a uh, water box or a Red Sea? Absolutely. I've owned the Red Sea Reefer and it's a great system. The low iron glass, the overflow, the glass sump, right? But I think the Reef Octopus is better quality. 
Okay. Now people can debate that. Of course, that's very debatable. And I think the value might be better. It comes with, I mean, everything you get, if, I mean, if you were to buy a stand like this, you'd be looking at four or $500. You know, if you were looking at a high quality tank like this, you're looking at three to $500. Uh, the sump, the protein skimmer, these are all high end items. Um, so if I'm going to compare it to a Red Sea reefer, very, very similar in the equipment it comes with, uh, it just depends on what you're going for. Do you want a glass sump like the Red Sea Reefer or do you want an acrylic sump? Um, do you care that there's an internal weir for your Red Sea system or do you want to have the back flat and no internal weir? Do you mind having a glass sump versus an acrylic sump? Those are just questions you have to ask yourself. Um, overall impressions, I know that was a long answer. I'm excited. I'm excited about this build. I think it's I can't believe I'd never heard of it. I, I, it. It shocks me, you know, that I have never heard of this tank. And so I'm really excited to try it out. All right, so let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna get back here. I was kind of just thinking, Cindy, what are the options compatible? You look good, you skip my question, Mikey, Mark. All right, Mikey, sorry, um, did I skip your question? I'll go back up here. Mikey, question, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. Uh, Mikey, 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 Mikey. All right, so Mikey, I don't think I skipped. Here we go. Mikey Moore, could you rec... Oh, it's 11 o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna answer... I'm gonna answer this last, this last question, okay? But I gotta go soon. I've already been on this for two hours, which is crazy. By the way, everybody, before I answer these couple last questions, thank you guys for being here. Um, I'm so glad so many people show up, and not only beginners, but I'm so glad for people like Cindy, Coral Gal, and Rogue Aquariums, and Farm Boy Reef, who are experts, who are pros in this hobby, for taking the time to answer your questions. Like, that's really generous of you, and I'm super duper appreciative of that. If you haven't given this video a like yet, if you could do that, I have five more likes to go to get to my goal of 30. I don't think it will happen in the next 10 minutes, but if you haven't done it yet, if you could give it a thumbs up and get us closer to 30, that would be fantastic. That'll still be my goal for next week then, unless we hit 30 this week. Okay. Where was the question? Mikey, could you recommend 12 to fish? All right, Mikey says, could you recommend around 12 to 15 fish that would work in my 60 to 75 gallon tank? I'm looking for some good tank makes that could work together. The only fish that come to mind are Nemo tanks. Absolutely. Absolutely, I can recommend it. And the easiest way I'm going to recommend it is, of course, by plugging my website because that's what it's here for. Alrighty. If you go, um, wait, who am I answering? Uh, Mikey, sorry, Mikey. Uh, Mikey, if you go to my website and click on saltwater fish, this is a good place to start. The easiest way to answer this question is to choose peaceful fish, choose community fish. Um, you will have the most success with community fish. As soon as you start getting semi-aggressive fish, like clownfish and damsels, you just have to be a little bit more cautious. All right, so if I was to recommend fish here, I don't, why are my links all broken? Top 10 beginner fish. These are my recommendations. Uh, 60 to 75 gallon tank, a pair of clownfish. Great, great addition. You could get a few cardinal fish, three to five cardinal fish. They're fantastic. Free swimmers, different than the clownfish that are going to be around an anemone or around a piece of rock or around a power head. These cardinal fish, they're just going to sit still in your water column. All right. A thing to consider, Mikey, is you want to use the entirety of your water column. So get fish that like the top, get fish that like the middle, get fish that like the rock work, get fish that like the sand bed, and then you're going to utilize your space the best. Firefish, great. So if I was to do this, what would I do here? All right. Two clownfish, so that's two. Three cardinal fish, we're at five. A fire, sorry, yeah, a firefish for six. A watchman goby for seven. Sure, six line wrasse, eight. So far, it works, eight. One of each of these, nine, ten. They're great. I love hawkfish. Fantastic. So we're at ten. I don't know if I would get a chromus or not. Sometimes they play nice, sometimes they pick on others, so I'd probably say skip it. I don't know if I would get an azure damselfish. Sometimes they play nice, sometimes they don't. Coral Beauty, 
11. Royal Grandma, 12. So I got to 12. There's a lot of other good options out there. Talk to your local fish store. Uh, they might have some really, really good options for you. Alrighty. What's your impression and opinion about the Octolux? I think I just did that one. Octolux is re is a rebranded aquarium. What do you what do you what do you mean? It hasn't been out long enough. If you look on the website, it gives you. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, I guess I don't. I guess I didn't even realize it was rebranded. It must have been something else before. Um, all options are compatible with each other. I was kind of just thinking of finding a bunch that are compatible and just cherry picking the ones that look good. Louis beats. Louis, I answered your question. Oh, sorry. No, I didn't. Sorry, Louis. What size skimmer do you recommend for a water box? 220.6 with or without a refugium. All I would do there. All right, let's just take one brand, Louis. Choose a brand. Reef Octopus, Nios, Bubble Magus, Aquamax. And let's just look up Aquamax skimmer, okay? Uh, see you, Ken. Uh, you're welcome, Dino. So how many water box? 220. Is that 220 gallons? All I would do here is, for example, Aquamax has hang on the back skimmers. You don't want to hang on the back skimmer. Aquamax has uh, skimmers with the pump inside. And Aquamax has controllable skimmers with the pump inside. And then they also have larger skimmers with the pump outside. Okay, so if I was to choose one, I would say, let's start with the internal one. More safe spacing. Saves more space, okay? So we have the Q1, it's gonna be smaller here. What do we have here? The Q2, DC Q2, is the two the biggest? Is the two the biggest? So let's look at the two. 270 gallons, they will give you their ratings, you know? And you have to ask yourself, how heavy am I gonna stock my system? If it's not going to be heavily stocked, just take that into account. Okay, then you scroll down here, and it should tell you. There we go. Aquamax Cone. Cone, here we go. We're on the Qs. And it says high gallon rating. Cone Q2 rated from 130 to 250. So you might want to go with the Cone SQ3. 240 to 420, that might be a bit much. So maybe you stick with the cone. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I wasn't sharing my screen again. I'm sorry. I'll get better at that. So these are all the Aquamax ones I was just talking about. Okay. And if you scroll down here and you look, you don't want an ultra compact. Your system's not ultra compact. Uh, COs can be a great option. Check them out. See if you like the style of them. But here is their gallon ratings. Compact series, the original, the cone, this is the one I own. You'd probably go somewhere with the cone Q2. Maybe the Q3, depending on if you have a heavy bio load. Um, yeah, so those are my recommendations. Just read the descriptions below, decide if you're gonna have a heavy bio load or not. And yeah. Well guys, we almost made it. We have 27 likes. We didn't quite make it to 30 today. If you haven't had that chance yet, go ahead and give it a like. It is 11.08 and we answered a lot of questions and I had some fun and we had some good conversations back and forth. So I really appreciate that guys. Uh, if you want to see all the questions answered, check back later today. Tomorrow I will put a link with a timestamp below with every single question. You can just click on that. Two more likes, oh my gosh, we're at 28 likes. Can we get to 30? Can we get to 30 likes? That would be amazing. We'll be here again next week, Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. to answer all your beginner questions. And for those old pros that are still here, like Coral Gal, thank you guys for being here. They are super helpful for answering these questions as well. If I didn't answer your question, super sorry. Oh wait, guys, I have 29 likes. Can one more person do it? Then I reach my goal. What do you think? And then we'll end the stream, 29. Bye, Dwight. Bye, everybody. 30, we did it. We did it. Oh, we did it. My goal. Thank you, guys. You guys are the freaking best. I can't believe it. We made it. We actually made our goal. 30 likes during a live stream. You guys are awesome. Okay. Uh, 
check it out guys. I will see you guys next Friday for my video release and next Saturday for my live stream. Happy reefing everybody. Take care. Be well.